48 hours after reaching a deal on the budget, avoiding that government shutdown, the House Speaker John Boehner saying today that if Congress is truly serious about creating jobs and fixing the economy for good, much more needs to be done. The House Speaker John Boehner live with me in studio here in New York, and good morning to you. Bill, good morning. Uh, your first TV interview since the agreement late on Friday night. Did America get a good deal on Friday night? I think it was the first big step forward. This isn't perfect. It isn't everything that I wanted by a long shot. Uh, but I do believe that it's the first step uh, in what's going to, going to be a, a lot of steps uh, if we're going to fix our fiscal crisis in Washington. Well, you uh, wrote a piece today in the USA Today. Twice you used the word perfect. Once you said it's imperfect. And, and I think Americans see it the same way because we're still spending more than we make. No question. Remember, the, the Democrats didn't do a budget last year. Uh, and then when they had Democrat majorities in the House and Senate and the White House in December, uh, they failed to pass a way to fund the government through September 30th. And, and they left us holding the bag, and we passed a bill to cut $100 billion from what the president wanted to spend. And we ended up uh, in, a, uh, in an arrangement where we're going to spend $78, $79 billion less than what the president wanted so to spend would, would you for the next six months. Would you consider this a good start then? Good start. But, but it's, but it's, long, bi it's billions with the B and next we're going to talk about trillions. But for, before I get to the next big battle, would you have gotten what you, what you did in this deal um, had it not been for the Tea Party members in the House? Had it not been for the, the House Republican freshmen pushing you along? Well, if it weren't for the House Republican freshmen, we wouldn't be in the majority. Uh, and this government would be spending $79 billion more, or really $100 billion more, uh, over the balance of this year. Uh, our freshmen have brought a lot of energy to the fight. Uh, and, and while the president and others want to malign the Tea Party, uh, these are Americans who have gotten engaged in their government, many for the first time. Uh, and I think we ought to welcome their involvement, welcome their energy, and we should listen to them. You think you'll get their vote? when this comes to pass on Thursday of this week, we'll officially? Get, we'll get some of those votes, others we won't. Uh, but this is a, a step in the right direction, but just a small step. Uh, when we deal with uh, Paul Ryan's budget this week, uh, our path to prosperity, uh, we'll begin to take on the much bigger challenges that face our country. All right, now on the Paul Ryan budget and also the debt ceiling. Let's take the debt ceiling. They, they, they could go hand in hand, ultimately. But, but if you vote to raise the debt ceiling, you said on Saturday night to a group of supporters in Connecticut that you want something really, really big in return, uh, really, really big in terms of cutting spending or reform for government programs. Uh, what do you define now as really, really big? Big. I'm not going to negotiate with you, just like I wasn't going to negotiate with the media in Washington. But the president has asked us to increase the debt limit. In other words, to increase uh, the, uh, the limit on the credit card. Uh, well, that without doing anything about the source of the problem. Uh, and we've got to deal with the source of the problem. If that's the and case, then three issues. will you settle for less than trillions of dollars in spending, whether that's $2 trillion or $4 trillion or $6 trillion, as Paul Ryan has proposed? We're going to work with our colleagues in the House, our colleagues in the Senate and the White House, uh, to try to make sure that we take meaningful steps uh, to, to put our country back on a path of fiscal uh, uh, sanity. Today, we don't have that. Uh, it's too early to predict what could or yeah. couldn't happen, uh, but we're going to work to make sure, because I can tell you, my members won't vote to increase the debt limit unless we're taking serious steps in the right direction. So th this has been labeled now, this next battle, as Armageddon. C can you guarantee that the U.S. government will not default we, don't want to, we do not want to default on our debt. We should not default on our debt. These are obligations of the federal government. And just like households have personal obligations uh, that they have to meet, the federal government needs to meet its obligations as well. Uh, and I think that not raising the debt limit uh, would have serious, very serious implications for the worldwide economy and jobs here in America. Uh, but having said that, we're just not going to do the typical Washington thing, roll over, increase the debt limit without addressing the underlying problem. And you know, how, depending on how long this debate goes and how it plays out, you could see a weakening of confidence in the American economy uh, here could. and overseas. Are you prepared for that? The, most, uh, the biggest threat that we have to our economy and to our future is doing nothing. And that's what the president asked us to do, do nothing. 
Uh, doing nothing is totally irresponsible, and we will not go down that path. The White House said over the weekend, just Sunday, that they're prepared to look at everything in the budget, that um, every corner of government needs to be looked at and examined. Uh, we'll hear from the president. He'll make a speech on Wednesday. Uh, we believe that he will lay out his ideas for Medicare and Medicaid reform, and also, possibly, taxes on some wealthier Americans. What do you think about that? Uh, Washington has a spending problem, doesn't have a revenue problem. Uh, and I think that we need to look at the spending side of this. But I'm anxious to hear what the president has to say. Uh, we've been waiting for months for the president uh, to enter into this debate with us. And I can tell you that privately. I've encouraged the president. Mr. President, lock arms with me. Let's jump out of the boat together. We have to deal with this. This is the moment in time that, uh, that we've been given uh, to address the problems. Uh, forget the next election. Uh, forget, uh, you know, the, the next poll that's going to come out. It's time to do the right thing for the country. Do you feel more emboldened after this deal was reached? Do you feel as if you have more cards to play? I feel because as of though the way you pushed it. We've, we've built a fairly decent foundation uh, leading into the next fight. I understand, Bill, that there are going to be dozens of these battles over the next 18 months. We've just been through the first one. Uh, we're about to engage uh, in the second one. Uh, but this is going to go on and on and on. Uh, I like the president. I get along with him very well. It uh, doesn't mean that we don't have very different visions for what the role of the federal government should be in our society. Uh, but uh, we got through this one successfully. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one's going to be much more difficult. Uh, and he knows it, and I know it. I want to hold on that, that thought here. We're going to get a commercial break. But when we come back, I want to ask you about your relationship with him and, and how this emerged and how the two of you either got along or did not behind closed doors because a lot is being written about that also. We'll have that coming up uh, in three minutes. Also more with Allison, too. Allison? All right, I look House Speaker John Boehner holding a handful of closed door meetings with the president. Uh, that was last week. But during those critical budget negotiations, take a listen to Speaker Boehner uh, on Saturday night describing what apparently was a tense moment uh, with the Vice President Joe Biden during those talks at the White House. It was beginning to break up and all of a sudden the jovial uh, never says a nasty word, Joe Biden, jumps up and says, Well, I think we've had enough of this. I think we ought to just shut it down. We'll let the American people decide. <laughs> I looked over at Joe and I said, Joe, what the hell is that? <laughs> you know, there's this feigned moral outrage like I was going to buy this. I think he must have forgotten that uh, I had 11 brothers and sisters and my dad owned a bar. <laughs> You know, I've seen this act before. <laughs> that was from Saturday night. Now back with the House Speaker John Boehner here in studio. Uh, what happened with Joe Biden? Oh, I don't know. It was this feigned moral outrage. And uh, I don't know, maybe he thought, uh, Harry Reid believed it was true. But I really, I've seen this act before. So I just looked at well, Joe what, and started what, laughing. What brought that on? Because oh, th this was during the, this was not quite he, the 11th hour, was but it was pretty to, close. He was, trying to, he was trying to move the process along. And uh, good try, but, it, you know, it's me. I've seen this act before. So you said, what in the hell is that yeah. to the vice president? Yeah. He's, listen, the vice president and I have had a long relationship. We've known each other. Uh, we get along fine. We work together fine. And th this was just so out of character for him that uh, I knew what it was. And how did he react? Well, he didn't, I didn't get him to smile, but I did get him to stop. And then you moved on. Just moved on. Then you went back with the president, President Obama. What is your relationship like now? Because there were stories being written over the weekend that you have this sense of warming or uh, toward one another or softening. Uh, is that true? Well, clearly we understand each other better. Uh, and uh, throughout these meetings over the last four or five weeks, uh, we've been straight up with each other, been honest with each other, uh, certainly haven't always agreed. Uh, but it, uh, it's, it, it was a good process. Now, do you think that you have moved closer in terms of finding a way to get common ground that will help move the next big process forward well, we may in, have in a found... way that perhaps was not established prior to this last battle? Uh, clearly, after spending uh, the last five or six weeks uh, in pretty close contact with the president, I think we've uh, understood more about each other. I think we've developed a process uh, that may uh, allow the debate to go forward. But I understand that uh, ideologically there are giant differences uh, between uh, the president and myself when it comes to how we view the role of the federal government. 
You know, I, was, I used to run a small business before I went to Washington. I went to Washington because I thought the government was too big, spent too much, and wasn't being held accountable. And so I'm for a smaller, less costly, and more accountable government. Now, the president has a completely different view of the federal government than I do. Uh, and having said that, uh, for the good of the country, uh, it's our obligation to sit down and try to find a way to work together uh, to advance the interest of our country. And at one point you said, I think we were sworn in a speaker, you said maybe we should have a Merlot summit. Well, they wanted to have a Slurpee summit. I wasn't yeah. too interested in Slurpee. Well, I thought Merlot would be better. That's still a possibility? Of course it is. Yeah? What would that get us, the American people? Hopefully a process that will bring us a little closer uh, to address the big concerns that face our country. All right. Eric Cantor, how's your relationship with him? Good. You know, there's a lot of people who want to write a lot of things about uh, Eric and I and the jostling for power. Uh, it's just nonsense. Uh, Eric and I have this, this wonderful relationship. We understand each other. Uh, we, uh, uh, we walk through all these battles together. And uh, uh, I'm grateful for his leadership. Thank you for your time. I'm grateful for your time coming here to New York. And you've been on the job, what, four months? Four months on the job, about three, three and, and a half. half. What do you think? It's a big job. Yeah. It's a really big job. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm humbled to be the Speaker of the House. Never thought my wildest dreams. And neither did you, him, 22 <laughs> years ago when you, you were covering me. The, ever think I'd be the Speaker of the House. But yeah, well, that, 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 was, uh, uh, that was then and so many years ago. But now you are in a situation where you face a moment in American history where you can help shape this country for the better. It's got to do the right thing every day for the right reasons, yeah. and the right things will happen. John Boehner, thank you for your time. We will speak again, and we'll see what happens in the next battle. It will be a big one, monumental. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Bill. Nice to see you.